Classic edition consoles are great. Take an emulator, a few games, slap them into a familiar looking little piece of plastic and call it a day. It's great for having a quick way to pick up and play some of your favorite games, or for Timmy and Mima, who both look at BSNES like it's the NASA control room. By far the most interesting thing about these miniatures is the games, or rather, the games they don't have. These classic consoles contain maybe 20, 30 games of the machine they represent, and can almost be seen as the definitive selection for that original system. It's kind of like a best hits album. These overpriced stocking stuffers have a little bit of everything, the absolute smash hits that became household names, the best representation the system had of a few genres, maybe a few sleeper hits thrown in here and there, and hey, you just made the GBA classic that's never gonna come out. It's really fun speculating what would be on a classic edition of a console that doesn't have one yet, and then when that classic edition is made, it usually delivers. Except for this, what is this? The PlayStation Classic features 20 games, which on the surface sounds good. You're telling me this system's gonna have 20 CD-sized games from one of the best game libraries of all time? Even at the original $9.99 asking price, this should have had more bang for your buck than any other Classic Edition console. Yeah, it should have. Looking at the games list, immediately there's some questionable choices. Twisted Metal 1? Not the worst choice, but Twisted Metal 2 is widely considered the best one. Rayman? It's a good game, but is it really one of the top 20 PlayStation games? And this version isn't even the best version. The Saturn port got higher ratings across the board, as that system is more comfortable with 2D games like this. And those are just the questionable ones. It gets so much worse. Jumping Flash is an early 3D platformer that has you play a bouncing rabbit named Robit. Yep, that's real. As you jump on the heads of enemies. It's kind of fun, but the controls feel so clunky. I mean, I know this is a collection of games from an older system, but don't you want to pick games that age sort of, even kind of well? This game came out before Super Mario 64, but the PlayStation Classic sure didn't. Well... At least it's not like there were any good 3D platformers on the PlayStation, so it's not really a big deal. Ah, uh, yes. I remember Mr. Driller. I remember back in the day getting a PlayStation just for it. You know, with it being such a hard-to-find exclusive. Yeah, I think if your game's also available on the Wonderswan, you have to take it out of the lineup. That's like if a game was playable on a public toilet. Hey, what's up, Phil? It's an emergency. The SNES Classic has Street Fighter 2 Turbo on it. We need a PlayStation Street Fighter game, dude. Do we have any? Okay, I'll check. Yeah, we got him. Thank God, man. You're a lifesaver. Just pick one and we'll be good. I can just pick one? Yeah. I mean, how bad can you mess that up? Why is this on here? It's like, oh no, we don't have Final Fantasy VII, but we do have Final Fantasy VII Pinball! Either pick a different puzzle game or put a real Street Fighter game on here. Why is this the only Street Fighter game? In Rainbow Six, you play as Rainbow, a serial rapist, and the goal of the game is actually to kill all the good PlayStation games so that Rainbow Six, a game that has a 3.8 on IGN, has a chance of making it on the PlayStation Classic. Seriously, this is the best they could do? And what's with all the early releases? Five of these games were released within two months of the system's launch. That doesn't make them bad or anything, but that's like if the Genesis Classic had Arnold Palmer Golf or Tommy Lasorda Baseball on it, just because they were out in time for that first sweet Christmas cycle. This thing is a disaster. Even ignoring the rampant technical issues, just the games picked make this a mess. And it shouldn't be that way. It's really easy to fix too. Just switch a couple games out and boom much better. Now, the reason they didn't do this is because many of the PlayStation's best hits were actually developed by third-party companies. That means lots of time being spent negotiating on licenses for Spyro, Crash Bandicoot, and so on. And they didn't want to bite that bullet. This sells for 20 bucks now. As much as it's really fun to bash the PlayStation Classic, it's kind of sad that Sony's debut console doesn't have a proper collection of games that do it justice. The PlayStation really does have one of the biggest and most diverse libraries, and unlike a Nintendo console, your favorite games are going to be way different than somebody else's. Here are just three of my favorites that you probably haven't even heard of before. At least, like, one of them.
The Unholy War is battle chess meets strategy RPG, and it's all about destroying the other team's base. There's a red team, there's a blue team, need I say more? But what really sets the game apart is that when you attack a unit, the game drops you in an arena and you'll have to punch, kick, and zap your way to victory. In addition to the unique moves each unit has for in the ring, they also have special overworld abilities like teleporting or healing an adjacent unit. Each of the 12 or so characters are weak or strong to particular units, and it becomes this fun cat and mouse game as you try to wipe the enemy team off the board. No One Can Stop Mr. Domino is maybe the best name ever, and it's all about setting up dominoes for crazy chain reactions. You run around a circular stage and have to trigger every single event to win the level, but here's the catch. You barely have enough time to run around the stage maybe twice, so you'll have to have a near perfect run, chaining multiple events while going as fast as possible, and if you mess up, you're probably gonna have to start over. It's a balancing act of speed and accuracy. Some of the animations you get for setting off these events are better than the game itself and it's just full of Japanese weird I don't I don't even know what that is Bushido Blade is technically a fighter but it's really more a Bushido Blade game a fight in Bushido Blade usually goes like this Oh, he's dead. <laughs> yeah, there's no health bar here. Instead, it's a glancing blow, you lose a limb, or you die. Instead of fancy combos, it's more a waiting game of trying to get that one big hit on your opponent to send them down. There's actually no stages either. It's just a giant map, and you can run around and pick a place to fight. Or just keep running forever. There's lots of win animations in Bushido Blade, and they're all very sad. This guy just killed a kid, and he's sad about that. This guy just killed his master, and he's sad about that. This guy is giving his opponent what appears to be a piggyback ride. Bushido Code is all about honor and chivalry. And in the game, that means you shouldn't do simple things like stabbing people while they're on the ground, or throwing dirt in their eyes, or killing them while they monologue. You could easily beat everyone in the story mode by breaking all the rules, but do you really want to do that? You bad person? You asshole? You, you coward? Actually, yeah, the game doesn't let you finish it if you don't follow the code. PlayStation is a great system, and the 20 games you would pick for your very own PlayStation Classic are gonna be totally different than the ones I would pick. Just make sure none of those games are Destruction Derby.